love. In the background, I could hear an awful commotion, men's voices raised and women screaming. It was the third time this month, yet another victim of the Hackney Yard slasher, the body mutilated beyond recognition, with the heart missing as always along with yet another message that read I steal the hearts of people. Oh! How killer is my charm! That sick freak, exclaimed Officer Rhodes. We both had been partners for years which I have lost track of. Never in our work had we seen this much of a mentally derogated killer, killing people for fun and even taunting. We didn't know in what sick fantasy did he need to mutilate the body so badly. Nevertheless, we managed to track down the slasher to one singular location, the abandoned Jefferson's Hospital for the Mentally Disturbed. We maintained extreme caution as the slasher was unstable, both mentally and physically. When we entered the age-old abandoned building, the sight that we witnessed has imprinted upon us in the worst way imaginable to this day. Hearts hung from the ceiling using string all over the place. Officer Rhodes felt queasy after witnessing this and asked to go outside for a quick moment to clear his stomach. After the minor inconvenience, we entered the building, thoroughly searching each and every room cautiously and quietly. After we cleared almost the whole building, we were left with the immediate care unit. We heard some humming and clanking of metallic tools. I signaled Rhodes to ram the door open. As we breached the door, we saw the slasher, and chaos ensued. He panicked and tried to swing his cleaver at us, but we somehow managed to subdue him and cuffed his hands and legs. As we were investigating the room, I saw the lifeless, rotting corpse of what probably could have been a blonde, almost thirty-five-ish-year-old beautiful woman. As soon as we tried to go near the corpse, the man started shouting, Get away from my rose. I must keep her alive. She just needs a heart transplant, that's all. I will fix her. I will fix her. I will fix her, as he collapsed to the ground. As we cremated the body of Rose, everything started to make sense. A happy man with a happy wife, those found near the bodies were not taunts, but compliments. Compliments from the wife to the husband, from Rose to him. As we were taking him out of the building to the station, only and only one question was resonating in my mind. How far and deep can a person go for the sake of love, 